if someone walks out of this lecture, we'd like to summarize with saying that we're recommending they you're, you're recommending they avoid all GMO foods. You're saying stop eating animal products, and you're saying eat only organic. I'm not sure if that's what you said, but that's what I my thought. Um, all right, so I guess, are you agreeing that those three things, avoid GMOs, stop eating animal products, eat only organic, and can you add to that list? If someone says, is going home to their spouse or wants to know for themselves, can we make that list, can we add to that list anything else that you feel would be key components for personal responsibility that would make a big difference? I mean, my big four are Eat less sugar and processed junk, eat more whole plant foods, eat less animal products, especially from factory farms, and source consciously with organic, non-GMO, fair trade, local, um, etc. cetera. Um, and yeah, so those are the big things that I, that I focus on and advocate for. And I think if we move in the, that direction, we can transform millions of lives uh, in short order. Um, then, of course, we're talking food here, and that's the focus, but we know there's more to health than food, right? There's exercise and movement. We need to, I think Dean Ornish says, we need to eat better, stress less, love more, and move more, right? That's his big four prescription, and it's, it's worked, you know? His, his program was the first to document that we could not only prevent, but reverse even the most severely developed heart disease just with those four, four principles. Atherosclerosis rates were dropped by 81% amongst patients with severe heart disease just by adopting the Ornish program. It's better than any drug that's been developed without any of the negative side effects, only good side effects like a better sex life and more vitality and energy and less risk of cancer and, and uh, dementia. Well, I like everything you said, so I agree with it. I tend to want to go sim a little simpler, because if we just go organic, I, I have a whole slideshow on GMO, and in the end of the story is the only thing I could say is, go local organic. That's really it. And then you cut through everything. Uh, so that's one thing, you know. I, I talk about what I call the six foundations, which is an 80% live and 100% plant-based and doing uh, exercise, including breathing exercise, which we'll be teaching tomorrow morning, and the yoga, and the tai chi, and qi gong, and then service and charity, which opens up your heart and helps the connectivity, and seeing us all as equal souls in the process, the fourth step and meditating, and praying, uh, and, and working collectively, it really makes a huge difference. We know that when people work, are part of a group, they do live longer, and they have about half as much depression. They're very real things, and they're really simple things. So those are things. The other uh, part, corollary of that, uh, I call it sevenfold peace, and, and peace with the body, which we've mostly been talking about, and then peace with the mind, and what we eat affects our mind. Now, when you take in animal, well, even if it's an organically grown animal, there's still pain, misery, and suffering. And you're going to take that pain, misery, and suffering into you because that is the last moment of that animal's life. So you're you're creating pain, misery, suffering in yourself and, and the diseases that come with that. That's a big, a, a big kind of, of thing in the picture. And the third is sacred relationships, the importance of family, the importance of the sacred relationship between two people, uh, the really importance of lineage, and also community. Right now, in the United States, but really many places in the world, the society's in chaos. Can we be in right relationship with that, the right date detente with that, that we're not being negatively affected and we can uplift it, thinking the positive. Um, and then we talk about cultural. And I, from a Native American point of 
to use the word om in Takuasin, means to all my relations. The rock people, the living earth, the plant people, the animal flying, swimming ones, and the human cultures, and then all the human cultures. So if we're in right relationship with that, it changes a whole lot. And then we have spiritual ecology, which we've been alluding to, and then peace with the divine. So when you combine all this together, you're creating a total matrix from which we can bring forth healthy living on all levels. So that's kind of the bigger picture. The simple picture, if you go organic, you're going to solve a lot of problems right there. If you go authentic, that's really good in terms of that. And if you're doing all the six foundations, sevenfold piece, you're, you're, you're really creating a, uh, a multi-leveled space for the evolutionary upgrade of all humanity. So that's enough. <laughs> I don't take a position on which type of diet, vegetarian, paleo, keto, fasting, intermittent fasting, whatever. My strategy has been to keep the bar as low as possible to become non-GMO. And it's worked. By focusing so much on the health dangers, the behavior change messaging, and getting it out there, we have made a huge change in the United States and around the world. So I don't actually take a position on politics, on anything other than what I am focusing on because I don't need to create any more controversy. I don't need you to agree with any of my politics or any of my dietary philosophies except avoid GMOs and go organic as well. Now, many people ask me the question for years, well, in addition to changing your diet, is there anything else you can do to heal your body? And I'd always say the exact same thing. It's above my pay grade. I am not a doctor or a scientist. I don't have patients and I don't have a degree to help you. But then I started talking to doctors and scientists who are actually focusing on it, who developed supplements that actually reduce the amount of glyphosate in human urine, supplements that close the gaps of the human cells that were open because of glyphosate who had created research protocols to detox the body through a variety of ways, even a Roundup or glyphosate detox protocol, and I realized I have to share this information. Now, I'm not qualified to answer the questions, but I'm overqualified to ask them. So I gathered 18 experts and asked them, how do you heal from GMOs and Roundup? And at healingfromgmos.com, we put together a conference and we released it and about 60,000 people online attended it and they loved it and they had all sorts of recommendations and it was exciting. But I don't generally repeat those recommendations. I'll just make that healing from GMOs available so you can get it directly from them. But that's over and above. But there's one other thing I want to share because you asked, what is it beyond those three things? And that is my experience, and I know many other ex people's experience that take on a global issue and don't shy away from being a leader. How many in the audience feel like there's something bigger for you brewing, but you haven't yet said fully yes to it or discovered it? Raise your hand. Okay, so. Most of you. And how many people believe that fear might be something that needs to be handled in order to get to the other side of that? Okay? So I'm going to share one, one point here. My experience is there is a part of us that has a calling, that knows what to do and even to a large part how to do it. And we cower in a smaller part of ourselves, and only within the smaller part of ourselves do we have the gap of fear. But when we fully step up and embody and embrace that part of us, 
which says yes to our destiny, yes to our calling, yes to how we want to make an impact on the world. It's as if we go to the place of fearlessness. I remember in Taiwan, I think someone said, Mr. Smith, I want to thank you for being so brave. And I said, actually, I'm not brave. For bravery, you need to have fear. And bravery will step through it. I don't have any fear. I am honored to do this work. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, when you step up, and I can ask the other, my, my colleagues on the, on, on the table here, the panel, if it's your experience as well, when you step up to truly be a leader and a change agent and accept that, not only does the fear drop away, but it's like an advanced technique. The rough edges of the personality drop off because you don't have time for them. You've got a, you, you're, you're holding a much bigger platform. So I would like to, you're seeing person after person, leader after leader for 10 days at this amazing conference. And I'm saying, beyond what they say, let them inspire you so that that voice in you that's saying, do more, do more, say, yes, I will, and, and leap to that place of fearlessness. Don't push against it, just leap to it and see what happens in your life. So... When everyone goes home, <laughs> we're going to basically have a list that says, avoid all GMOs, uh, stop eating all animal products, although Jeffrey is not taking that position, but um, Gabriel and Ocean are. Eat only organic, and not only eat organic, but buy, it lo buy locally grown organic, so it's far more desirable to go to the Union Square Farmer's Market and buy from the guy from 50 miles away than buy stuff that came from California. So if those are the well, four... hey, I'm from <laughs> California, so... <laughs> me, me, me too. Well, Taking offense at that. No. If, if you're from California, buy from California. Yes. So in addition to those four points, are we also saying that to fix the food system, that everyone should try to grow some of their own food? Are we saying that it's important to use heirloom seeds versus hybridized seeds? Are we saying that when you buy a whole food, like a potato versus a potato chip, you working to an organic potato only connects you to a farmer where potato chips involves snack companies. Um, are we saying to drink water because soda involves, involves high fructose corn syrup and we don't want people growing corn for that? Um, are, are any of those things part of this four point list we've made? Sure. You want to comment <laughs> on any of them or just all of them? <laughs> I couldn't agree more. I mean, it's part of the whole, there are the implications of everything that has been said here. That's, that's the key, that they're just implied. I think, I think that's fair to say. And I, I want to I address the diversity of people responding to this information. When some people watch secret ingredients, they get to the cupboard stage, which is they go to the cupboard and they empty everything that's not organic and they refill it. Some people, it's like they're devastated by the fact about throwing out food because of their own economic situation or cultural situation, so it's more of attrition. When this thing runs out, we'll get an organic one. Um, and I would say um, the list is great of do, you know, try and f get all the different pieces together. But we also need to understand that we've been operating under the tyranny of the shoulds for much of our lives. We should do this and should do that, and we all have a re relationship to our own uh, tyrant. I would say joyously step into a healthy life. Joyously take the steps as you shop and figure out. There's one thing that I would like to suggest that often comes up with the question, but isn't organic too expensive? But I think it, I, I can bring it into this question as well. I say, in addition to all the tips and tricks and things to get things less expensively and make healthier choices more easy, I say combine three budgets in your mind, your food budget, your health budget, and your philanthropy budget. Food is obvious, that's what you're buying. Health. Not so obvious until you realize 
that people actually spend less on medical care when they switch to a healthier diet by far. I spoke to one family, it went from $18,000 a year to 9,000 in one year of organic to 3,000 in two years in organic. That may be excessive, but I've heard spoken to many people where they make more money on saving in healthcare than they spend on organic. But also there's the philanthropy. This is where the joy in spending comes because you're now investing in the organic farmer. You're investing in the healthy local system. You're investing in a new world. And so some people, it's interesting, I'm gonna, I'm gonna probably name some of you. Probably you're gonna go, uh-oh, that's me. At the end of the year, you make a check out to 100 or 1,000 or 10,000 or whatever the number is. And then you work like crazy to save money and not buy organic because it's too expensive throughout the year. Take some of that 10,000 or whatever you give in donations, take some of that and put it into your food budget so that you realize you are investing in a changed world. And that way there's more joy and there's more power in what you're doing day to day. I, uh, I appreciate what you said. I'm getting back to the fear issue. And in terms of relationship, love is the power that helps you overcome the fear of intimacy. Just think about that for a second. Mm -hmm. And if we take it a step further, which is loving yourself enough to want to heal yourself, your love for yourself and love for humanity, is the power that helps you overcome your fear. So those are things to think about. I'm not sure that there isn't some fear there in some way, but you're loving yourself enough to want to heal yourself. And that's something to think about. I, I'm going to just share a funny story. Um, how uh, in 1973 when I went vegan, is my wife and I, she was pregnant, we both had this nightmare. And the nightmare is that the fetus, our daughter, who's 46 now, um, was a chicken, and we were eating it. And the next, that's it. We both, that nightmare, we both became vegan. One day. Did you have this simultaneous dream at yeah, the same yeah, time? Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> I've never heard of that. <laughs> it's trippy. So it's very funny. Um, but it's true. True story. Now, generally, people kind of move at their rate. You know, we give up. You may have heard me talk this morning about fat from fish is specifically toxic to the beta cells of the pancreas. People eating fish, you know, two times a week are going to have a lot more diabetes. And why meat is 35 to 50 percent meat eaters are, are going to get a, a 35 to 50 percent more diabetes. It has to do with the uh, leucine in, in the meat, which is toxic to the beta cells of the pancreas. I'm short condensing it. And also the fat in the meat and the fat in the fish. So we have things that, okay, they're really destructive. And, and so we look at what are we going to let go first? You know, fish and then chicken and then beef. And then we look at beans and we look at grain, uh, look at dairy. And then you look at beans and grains, things like that. So you're slowly moving that way. That may take you four years. It may you one day, depending on what kind of neighbor you had, okay? So I understand there's a tradition, there's a transition that, that people go through. And you really do need to go at your own rate, which is what you're saying. But a key element is loving yourself enough to want to heal yourself. That's a very important, very, very important motivation to begin thinking about. Uh, so I'm just kind of adding that as a, a perspective. And then the rate is kind of up to you how you do it. So just a, a way of thinking about it. Mm -hmm.